Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, Google File Systems uh, research paper. Uh, this research paper was published in 2003 by three people, actually three employees in uh, Google. And today the paper will be presented by me, uh, Samitha Sankar and uh, Frank Paranapula. So a little bit history about this paper. Uh, it has been written uh, in 2003 as I mentioned. And today it has been cited by more than 5,000 papers. So it's quite an, a, a popular paper. So let's get started with it. So this is the agenda. So I will uh, give a small introduction into the uh, distributed file system concepts uh, which were available at that time. And then some of the motivations why uh, Google went ahead and uh, um, went in a totally uh, different way. And then uh, the GFS architecture. Uh, the main components and the roles of the GFS architecture and what are the data that are kept in different roles, different components. And then uh, Frank will basically discuss some of the uh, system level operations and diagnostics and uh, uh, some of the fault tolerance and available systems. And then I'll go ahead and uh, discuss some of the performance measures uh, they've taken, especially in a clearance related uh, things. Uh, so attempts to come up with a uh, distributed sort of across a uh, network like a file system started uh, with NFS or network file systems uh, as you guys could remember. You just mount an NFS disk somewhere in the network probably in LAN and do your normal file operations. So in the minute you separate your storage across a network and try to access it uh, via a wire, there are several challenges that needs to be answered. Things like uh, name resolution, then the performance, scalability, reliability and uh, some of the consistency issues which is part of synchronization as well and then security. So among these uh, challenges I would like to uh, uh, take down two very important things, two very hard things that uh, uh, things like NFS uh, could easily handle. One thing is the performance and the other thing is the synchronization and consistency issues. So those are the uh, most difficult things uh, that can be uh, preferred there uh, in early versions of distributed file systems concepts that cannot be easily answered. So just keep in mind that when you are reading the uh, Google file system research paper, performance and consistency are a couple of main things that uh, Google try to answer with their Google file system approach. So as I mentioned uh, 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 previously, it started with NFS network file system mounts and then uh, there were a couple of uh, very interesting uh, distributed file system concepts like AFS or so Android file systems or GPFS uh, which was a much scalable sort of general parallel file. So all of a sudden uh, back in 2003 when there were sort of uh, different different concepts uh, of the distributed file systems uh, arena, Google came and published this paper describing their approach to distributed file systems. So what really important to understand here is where does Google stands today in the distributed file system arena with their approach. So what are their competitive advantage or why they are different compared to the, uh, the uh, distributed uh, file system architectures available at that time. So all these advantages are based on two different uh, basic concepts as I understood, two different dimensions at least. One thing is they are based on their workloads and one thing is based on, based on their environments. So before going into details, I would like to uh, present you guys with a question. The question is that, is GFS for Google file system a general purpose file system? Just keep that question in your mind and read the paper. So at the end of the paper, you will understand it. So come back to the uh, motivation discussion. So the first motivation is basically uh, they come up with the GFS or the general, general, uh, Google file systems which is tailored very much to work closely and efficiently with the existing workloads. So that's a very important design decision. So as we discussed on the other day, if you really want to have super fast and super scalable database architecture out of Oracle, you need to go in line with the Oracle file systems. Why? Because they know how their workloads are expected to work. Google services like search, if you take an example, should be using these file system services to get, max, to get maximum performance out of it. So in order to do that, they need to come up with a uh, very specific file system so that their workloads can get maximum performance out of it. So that is the performance part of it.
And the other thing, which goes along, along with the uh, GFS, uh, uh, the tailored uh, sort of uh, feature, is that GFS is built specifically to work with certain kind of applications. If you are familiar with Cathera, if you are sort of uh, familiar with the distributed sort of uh, concepts, the Cathera, which means the consistency, availability, and the restriction, uh, the resistance to network partition. So most of the distributed concepts are trying to uh, gain all these three properties, which are impossible to do with general purpose sort of uh, systems. So at most, only two properties can be achieved. So how does uh, GFS answer this? So how GFS uh, letting the application achieve max of max of these uh, properties, all the three properties? They do this by handle some of the properties inside the GFS and let some of the properties to be handled at the client level. So just think about it. If you are going to build a, a an application which runs on top of the GFS, what are the modifications you need to do in order to handle some of these failures and consistencies and things like that. So in order to get these all these uh, important features of distributed applications, as I mentioned, the Cathera, how the Google approach is that they have relaxed the consistency from the GFS to the clients. So that is what you mean by relaxing the consistency. Uh, in other words, if you think about the, uh, if you think of, of, of a normal file system, uh, the thing that, that comes to in your mind is the, uh, the POSIX API, standard API. What Google is saying is that they are not intended to, they are not intending to give you guys, give you a, uh, the, the clients a uh, general purpose POSIX or an API. But under the uh, implementation, because uh, GFS, the machines in GFS are like normal uh, uh, Linux or Unix machines. So behind the scenes, they use actually the POSIX implementations to store the actual files. But there are demons uh, in the chunk servers and other places, which will give an abstraction in the user space. They are like demons, which will, which will give abstractions. And also, they, have, they are giving two extra pages into their APIs so or the uh, file system interface which is called snapshot and the uh, record append. So by giving these two features, what they are expecting is that to get the burden, <coughs> some of the burdens out of the uh, GFS concepts, GFS architecture and let the clients handle it so that the consistency will be relaxed from the uh, GFS and it will be handled by the clients. So that is the uh, second uh, motivation which is behind the uh, GFS. Uh, <coughs> the other motivation behind the uh, GFS concept is that GFS is designed to support huge files. The files they are expecting are huge. And why? Because if you really de look deep, look down in the paper, you will see at some point they have restructured some of the applications to work with these uh, types of huge files. So why do they want to support huge files? Because that's what they are most of the applications do. So easiest way to understand this, this is to think about how web crawling and indexing could work with GFS. And uh, mind you, the GFS, the GFS of general uh, Google file system was initially designed to specifically work with uh, this web crawling and indexing because web crawling and indexing are generating insanely huge files. So they need to come up with a file system that can handle. So that is the uh, next motivation. And the other motivation, even though I mentioned in here, it's actually part of the uh, the first motivation, but uh, for the sake of uh, importance of it, I have actually put it in here, because what they were expecting from the early version, the earliest version of GFS was bandwidth over the latency. If you sort of look at the, uh, the operation that they are doing, you can easily see that they were mainly targeting the bandwidth, not the latency. So in other words, they were sort of planning more of a batch system because latency doesn't that doesn't uh, affect that much into the batch systems. But when it comes to real uh, real world applications like uh, client facing applications like Gmail and YouTube, then the, the latency does matter. But the earliest version of GFS was basically tailored to support bandwidth of latency. In other words. It was supported for batch sort of file systems. 
so that's why they were sort of uh, specifically uh, uh, worried about the web crawling and indexing it is some sort of a thing that is happening behind the scene so latency can be compromised over the bandwidth and some of the important things like scalability so that is another motivation although it's not actually a motivation it's part of the tailored uh, workload tailored their workload so all of the above four motivations are based on their workloads then the other motivation is based on the environment uh, the idea of uh, using very low cost commodity hardware is another motivation that they go beyond behind when it comes to the uh, gfs architecture they were trying to build their gfs on top of very cheap and commodity commodity uh, very cheap drives in my view this is another way, very important design decisions dollar per transfer byte was extremely low in this hardware so that was a very sweet spot for the google so that's why they, they sort of uh, went behind it yes it's true that they will break they will not dependable they are sort of okay with performance but if you can build a reliable system on top of this crappy hardware fantastic monitoring fault tolerance availability and some of the things discussed by frank uh, in the uh, upcoming slides observing things so if we can come up with a very uh, a nice sort of a uh, uh, fault of an architecture going along with this uh, crappy hardware is okay with them so that is the other motivation low cost commodity hardware so you can really reap benefits out of anything any low cost commodity hardware if you have required you have the uh, competency to get max out of it so that was the next uh, motivation behind their uh, google file system architecture okay now let's look at the architecture gfs architecture as you can see in gfs there are three main and key role players the gfs clients there will be multiple clients and there will be a master one master many many clients and then there will be uh, several chunk servers chunk servers are actually the uh, the places where the actual uh, files the data will be stored and master will be uh, some sort of a uh, master which will uh, handle the uh, management servers and then there will be so many clients who will be using the uh, google file systems so in other way if you guys could remember this is pretty much analogy with the uh, exokernel uh, design if you could remember this is some sort of the exokernel guys exokernel uh, layer where i will only do the management and then let the uh, applications to sort of work with the uh, lower level uh, hardware as as much as much as we like but the management will be happened at the master so that those are the main three uh, components in the uh, gfs architecture so the clients uh the clients will basically carry out normal operation of files like opening closing modifying re deleting rename blah 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 uh, by the way they have a very funny and a peculiar name that they are using for modifications they call them mutations sort of scary reminds me x men or some sort of a dear for a movie whatever so that is basically the client which will do the normal operations file operations and then it's the master master it sort of the uh, it is sort of the king of the uh, gfs architecture it's basically responsible for positioning of uh, replica of chunks uh, of particular file in the file system and also it will keep track of the uh, the namespaces the global namespaces uh, in other word uh, they are mentioning in the paper is that master will maintain an uh, authoritative namespace Uh, in other words how the uh, path and the data chunks are uh, mapped uh, uh, in the uh, google file systems uh, gfs so that is something uh, which is kept in the uh, gfs master uh, but the uh, the actual uh, the files the data will be kept in the uh, gfs chunk servers uh, so that is basically the uh, uh, the uh, responsibility of the responsibility of the master and then you have chunk servers 
they basically are the people who are people uh, servers who are storing physical data blocks uh, so that is the uh, main uh, roles involving in the gfs architecture uh, one important question uh, uh, i would like to mention here why do we need to uh, have replication of these uh, gfs chunk servers remember the uh, the hardware that we are using for these uh, servers and uh, hard hardware uh, hard drives are very cheap graphics chunks so we they will inevitably fail so they have to transfer data chunks to the clients so uh, in order to have that they need to have uh, uh, scalable and available uh, data portions in their chunk servers so that's why they are replicating uh, data in uh, more than one chunk server in fact each data by data stream that each file will be uh, each chunk of 64 megabytes will be uh, stored in more than uh, one uh, gfs chunk server they say that uh, it will be uh, copied into another two chunk servers or to get three chunk servers and you can even configure that uh, according to the term so that is basically the uh, the the overall uh, design of the uh, the gfs architecture so uh, if you go this bit deep so this is the uh, real bit details into the uh, different uh, roles number one uh, the chunk servers uh, chunk servers will basically store files they will have fixed size 64 megabyte uh, of uh, chunks they will store and each uh, chunk will have a 64 bit unique handle uh, which will be kept uh, it will be transferred to the client by the master and then uh, as i mentioned all the data will be uh, redundantly saved in three places and then this is the uh, the master so master will stores all the metadata it's the authoritative namespace uh, handler and it also keeps the access control information and it has some uh, information about the chunk locations as well and then uh, it has some lease management this is the uh, synchronization stuff and when, then uh, it will sort of uh, talk with the mask talk with the chunk servers using heartbeat operations and get uh, the updated versions of the uh, chunk locations and everything uh, so then here we have uh, some uh, very important design decision having one master now if you if the master should be communicated for every operation and if you have one master in the surface of the architecture there seems to be a bottleneck or a single point of failure with master isn't it so how does gfs mitigate this one thing is that one master will simplify very much simplify the design right and if it fails it is easy to replace because it is one thing so that is the uh, advantages of having one master the disadvantage is that it's a single point of failure so how gfs mitigate this one thing they have done is that they have eased the workload of the master If you look at the architecture diagram again, uh, you will see a couple of flows: a control flow and a much heavier data flow. Master will only give client a chunk location and a chunk handle to carry out its future operations. In other words, in GFS architecture, master has been moved out of the critical path. So, one master will only communicate very few information. It has only very few information. So, how do they? deal with master failures because inevitably master will fail because they are crappy and cheap this crappy and this uh, cheap machines so in here what they have done is what they have done is that they are replicating master configurations and data kept whatever the important data kept inside the master they have replicated in several other geo locations in a really efficient manner so get so that when the master fails they can easily assign the workload to another master and then use the copy of the things which were already duplicated in some other place to sort of get the master online so this will be done some on some server which is outside of gfs early versions it was a manual work but uh, in later versions of gfs it was automated now it's much 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 faster so single point of failure fine but there we have a smart detection a failure detection and a recovery system bring it on you can take care of the failures so that is the uh, single point of failure discussion about the master and then the clients we have so many clients who access in the gfs api 
and they need to look at the ABI and uh, follow the procedures to, if we want to get max out of the uh, Google file system architecture, which I sort of uh, discussed a little bit earlier. And then the, the other thing about uh, uh, GFS architecture is the caching. So in clients, uh, they are not caching the data actually, they are only caching the metadata because it's no point of caching huge amount of data because we are sort of uh, thinking about 64 MB of chunks data. So there's no point of caching huge amount of data, they are only caching the metadata. Of course they have uh, time to leave uh, expiration sort of thing, but they only they will only cache metadata. And master, in master they will basically keep the most important stuff like the uh, chunk location and the uh, chunk handle in the memory, in a memory uh, data structure. Why is that? Because later when you look at the statistics you can see for several thousands of megabytes of data they are only using several bytes of data in order to keep track of each chunk so in other words they can afford to keep those memory they keep those information in the memory so if you keep that means you can uh, uh, search through it in a very fast manner in the paper they say that they are using some sort of a binary tree sort of structure to make the things more efficient so that is what is happening inside the master. They are only, they are only keeping some very minute information about the file names and uh, other chunk handles and uh, other most important things in the memory, so that they, they could perform the things very faster. And uh, talking about the caching in the chunk server, of course, chunk server has its own uh, uh, Linux cache uh, caching thing. So it will inherently will be caching data uh, in the uh, Linux cache. So that basically is the uh, architecture discussion. Uh, so we will then move to the uh, statistics part. Mutation is an operation that changes the contents of metadata of a chunk, such as write or an append operation. Each mutation should happen in all the replicas. Primary is the closest replica to the client. Let's look at how mutations are designed in GFS. Client requester write operation. Master responses back with chunk handle and replica locations. Client pushes the data to the primary. Primary pushes the data to the other replicas. Client is acknowledged back with the success of the data received. A right request is made and primary forwards the request to other replicas. After the right operation is performed, primary is notified with the status of the right. At the end, client is notified with the final status. Safe numbers were assigned for each mutation and changes will be applied in that order. Errors will also be communicated and there will be retries. Leases and mutation order has been designed in such a way that minimizes the master's involvement in the redundant. System interactions so that master will be available for high priority activities. Heartbeat messages sent to the replicas. Heartbeat messages are used to extend the lease and revoke mutations. There will be an issue here as file region may end up containing fragments from different clients due to concurrent operations from other clients causes to have consistent but undefined state. In order to use network efficiently, data is pushed linearly. Interswitch links are used and data is sent to the closest replica. GFS uses a simple topology to find the distances. Switch network with full duplex links are used to transfer data. File planning is used over TCP connections. Replica checks the next replica whether there is data and if not forward immediately.
Let's see that in this example. Clan sends the data to the replica A. The shorter distance is calculated and C is the shortest. So data will be forwarded to the C. Now we have data in C and A. So both A and C transfers the data to E and B. So B, E and C now has the data. So they will transfer the data to F, G and D. In a record append, clients specify only the data and GFS choose the offset when appending the data to the file. Maximum size of an append record is 16 MB. Client pushes the data to all replicas of the last chunk of the file. Client sends its request to the primary replica. Primary replica checks if the data size would cause the chunk to exceed the chunk maximum size of 64 MB. If so, it adds the chunk to the max size, tells secondary to the same and replies to the client to retry on the next chunk. If the record size can fit in the chunk, primary appends the data to its replica and tells secondary replicas to do the same. Failing to write and retry results different data, GFS does not guarantee that replicas are identical device. Consistence as regions can be defined. Snapshot is a copy of a file or a directory using normal copy on write command. Snapshot request is made for master and a request is made by the master to revoke the outstanding leases. After the leases are revoked or expired, snapshot operation is locked to the disk. Metadata for the source file or directory tree will be duplicated by the master and newly created snapshot file will be pointed to the same chunk as source files. To allow multiple master operations, GFS does not have a per directory data structure. GFS locks over a region of the namespace to ensure proper serialization. Each absolute file or an absolute directory name has an associated read-write block. Let's look at the example in the screen. We have a folder structure D1, D2 and a file F1 within the D2 directory. We have S2 subdirectory within the S1 subdirectory. When we create a F1 file, operation is executed. Read logs will be applied over D1 and D2 subdirectories. Write logs will be applied over a file file in the D2 subdirectory. Let's assume the D2 subdirectory in D1 will be snapshotted to S2 in S1 directory. So S1 and D1 have read logs. There will be write logs for D2 in T1 and S1. So there are no interconnections or common read logs and write logs. Concurrent mutation can be happen in the same directory. GFS cluster is highly distributed at more levels than one, having hundreds of chunk servers, communication via many network switches. Replicas are spread across machines. The chunk replica placement policy serves two purposes. Maximize data reliability and availability. Maximize network bandwidth utilization. By ensuring chunk server availability and exploit aggregate read bandwidth of multiple racks. 
However, right traffic has to flow through multiple racks. That should spread shock replicas across racks also. Let's look at other mast operations. Shock creation, replications and rebalancing, garbage collection, stale replica detection or self-healing. Chunk replicas created for chunk creation, re-replication and chunk rebalancing. Chunk creation deals with creating and balancing the chunks to utilize this space in an optimum way. Replications of chunks will be in action when the number of available replicas fails below. Master rebalancing replicas periodically for better space and load balancing. GFS does not immediately reclaim the physical storage after a file is deleted and does it via a lazy approach. Master maintains a chunk version number for each chunk as there is an instance in which chunk replica may become stale. If a chunk server fails and misses mutations. Let's look at fault tolerance and data integrity. Before moving to that, let's see the challenges in the GFS. Quality and quantity of components, frequent component failures and component failures can result in an unavailable system. Oh, corrupted data are major challenges in GFS. Fast recovery and replications are the two strategies for high availability of the system. Fast recovery. Making master and master and chunk servers restore their state and restart under any sort of a termination. Not distinguishing between normal and abnormal termination. Clients and other servers experiencing a minor hiccup as they time out on their outstanding requests. Reconnect to the restarted server and retry improves the fast recovery. Chunk replication and master replication improves the replication. In chunk replication, each chunk is replicated on multiple chunk servers on different racks. And according to the user demand, the replication factor can be modified for reliability. Operation log, historical record of critical metadata changes and replicating. Operation log on multiple machine improves the master replication. GFS servers generate diagnostic logs, record events which can reconstruct the interaction history and can diagnose a problem. Log serves as traces for load testing and performance analysis. The key features are the performance impact of logging is minimal and logs are written in sequentially and asynchronously. Checksum detection improves the data integrity aspects of the GFS. Each chunk is broken down into 64 kilobyte blocks with 32 bits checksum. Chunk server verifies the checksum for each read, write and appends. So, right. so under the statistics section, the, uh, the annoying part that they are trying to measure here is the uh, network part because it's uh, one of the most important uh, thing that you should measure in a distributed file system. So uh, when you, if you look at the statics part towards the end of the file, uh, you will see uh, several uh, discussion points about some of the statist statistics uh, that they have uh, uh, collected. So uh, under the statistics, you will see a couple of different workloads uh, that they measure. One thing 
the, 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 uh, the workload B is actually uh, an actual production workload uh, which are doing uh, useful information, useful stuff. And then uh, the workload A is actually a research slash experiment or development oriented workloads where people run batch of jobs and analyzing data etc. So the, uh, the compared statistics are actually of two clusters. One is on uh, production which is B and the other one is uh, sort of the Google uh, geeks inside the uh, Google company who are trying to sort of uh, uh, break the GFS system. So if you look at the, uh, the, the data that you uh, uh, that they uh, collected here. So look at the amount of storage they provide in 2003. If you look at the production slot, it's 180 TB. Geez, that's cool, right? So uh, it's a huge amount of data. So one important observation here is the number of dead files in here. If you look at it, in the production workload, it has a uh, uh, huge amount of dead files when you compare to uh, the normal file system, the normal uh, workload. So these basically are the new versions of the file, the, the old version of the new files uh, which aren't up to date anymore. It's, ba it's basically the new stuff, uh, updating every day. For example, if you take, the, if you think about uh, an example like uh, new crawling results of Mr. Barack Obama and then the old versions of the uh, Barack Obama crawling results should be gone. So they will be actually uh, dead files. So they will be like uh, dead, uh, files in here. So these are actual dead files which have been collected by the garbage collector, the lazy garbage collector, which was discussed by the Frank in, in his previous uh, uh, slides. So and when we really look at the statistics present here, look at the amount of metadata kept at the master, right? If you really look at the uh, amount of uh, uh, metadata or the actual data in the chunks, if you look at it, it's like 155 terabytes. For these 155 terabytes, of course, some of them are replicas. Look at the amount of metadata kept at mass, 60 MB. So it's, it's a small amount of metadata that can be uh, kept in the memory. So it's easy to search and easy to... Uh, so that proves their point about the mass operation that they uh, mentioned uh, top of their paper. So uh, when we look at the graphs here, uh, that they uh, got, uh, that they got of uh, several uh, operations, the read performance, write performance, and the record event performance. So if you look at it, look at these three graphs. They basically uh, represent the read, write, and append performance in a restrictive sort of an environment. So as you can see, the aggregate read speed gradually decreases as number of lines increase because since multiple readers trying to read the same read from the same chunk server, so it might uh, it will sort of uh, reduce the uh, overall uh, read rate. But if you look at it, in here, uh, the uh, theoretical, if you have only one client, the theoretical network limit is like 12.5 megabytes per second, and they were able to achieve 10, around 10 megabytes per second. So it's like 80%, and when the number of clients go, uh, the uh, the performance, has the, uh, the portion from 80% dropped to 75%. But then again, uh, that's because uh, several uh, clients are to trying to access the same chunk server. So that is the reason why it sort of gradually sort of decreasing. Although it uh, increases, it, the rate is gradually decreasing. And then meanwhile in write and append operations, since each byte needs to be pushed into at least three chunk servers, we can, we can see uh, some uh, reduction of the uh, uh, speed that you are expecting. Uh, and as the number of client increases, when they try to write to same chunk server concurrently, the write speed then again decreases. That's why uh, the same amount of uh, uh, increase version, the rate that you cannot see in here. Uh, because several clients trying to write into three chunk servers and then uh, several clients to write into the same chunk server. So there are lots of conflicts here. So anyhow, if we consider a huge number of clients right into several millions of millions of chunk servers in real production environments, as per the Google people, they they didn't perceive so much uh, latency. And then again, keep in mind that the, this Google file system was not tailored to tailored for high latency, low latency. They were only 
they they were basically traded for high bandwidth. So then, so the latency was that not that much of a issue uh, in the production environment. Anyhow, they believe they have an opportunity for improvement in here to optimize the network stack to propagate the data replica in a much efficient manner across different chunk servers, so that uh, they would improve the network performance and get much better uh, write rate and append rates.